varsity action. We'll see you at a later date on Channel 15 Sports. Again, before we get started, I'll tell you the website's www.pegtv.com. And every Saturday at 4 o'clock, you can catch the games of the week. Again, it's 4 o'clock on Saturdays. Tom Lampold, the program director, starts games of the week. And I'm not a big technical guy. I'm not a big computer geek. But they got something going on at 15 that you can go to the website and click on to... Uh, streamlined video and, and I, th I think it's games and programs and, and everything so you don't have to even have access to a Comcast network anymore you can just go on the computer and, and catch the action on channel 15 so give that a check out any question give me a call at channel 15 at 747-0151 and they'll work it out for you burn Burton and MSJ and it's going to be a slow grinded out ball game because MSJ plays patient and it looks like burn Burton's going to play patient so I should have had a couple more Diet Coke. Stay awake for this one. Maybe I'll get cranked up here as we get going. It's Tyler Sanborn. He'll get to start at the point guard position. He's number 22. He'll come off to Cody Keith. Keith is number three out there for MSJ. And he'll get to the elbow and got sealed off from the defense. And he'll just work the ball back around. This is Louis Altabell with it. And he'll come to Sanborn. He wants to go inside, and that's covered. And you see Nallback trying to create a passing lane. Not to get the ball down to Nallback. He'll put it on the floor, a little jump hook, no good. Rebound controlled by MSJ. They'll come on the side with Altabell. So nice first step. And Cody Keith just didn't get the finish. He did everything but the finish. He gets a tip on the ball and it's gonna be green basketball. Yeah, so the MSJ squad with a nice job of working it down for a good shot. This is Conlon, number 21. So Conlon will bring the ball into play. And the point guard's gonna be number 32, Marino. Marino looking for the lob down inside. Actually, it was there. His player didn't break for the basketball, but they do recover. And they'll set up now, and they'll run through their half-court offense. And coach on the sideline, of course, is preaching patience. Yeah, up, and that's going to be blocked by Altabelle. He got up and got a piece of the ball, and it comes back to the hands of the Bulldogs. They'll take it to the hole and get fouled. Count the basket. Marino will get the basket, and I'm not sure who's going to get the foul here. Sexton. Sexton will get the foul, so that'll be the... Game's first fall, and we're tied at two right now, and a chance for Burn Burton to take the lead. That stops the clock with 6.25 to go. First quarter. And then they'll go in, so Marino will have a three-point play, and now Louis Altabaugh with a touch will bring it back, and now this will be taken over by Cody Keith, and Keith with a little bounce pass to Sanborn. Sanborn's pretty good on the... Uh, the outside shot this year, so they'll have to make sure they know where Sanborn is on the perimeter. Keith, as you just saw, likes to slash to the basket. And Sanborn inside an all back up, and boy, nice play by an all back. Went to the left hand even. Nice job by Justin. Good job of feeding the low post, and they'll make it four to three. MSJ with that one point lead in his JV contest. Sexton gambled on the steal, couldn't get there. That's a travel call, yep. That's an easy one. I was on Conlon travel. Yeah, and there'll be no pressure in the backcourt, and we'll see how that progresses for the night as far as coaches giving you a different wrinkle. Now it's going to be red, stolen, saved, traveled. Yeah, that was Perny who read the play, made the steal, but then did take a little baby steps there, and that becomes a travel. And we're going to put Marino on the basketball, and they'll come kick it in the backcourt. Now to Sanborn, Sanborn, to Nallback with the give and go, and there's Sanborn with the finish, and Nallback with the assist, and... That's about as old a play as you'll ever find in the gym being ran and still effective today. And of course that only works with that. Well, it doesn't only work. Works better against that man-to-man -man defense. That's going to be Marino with the touch and I guess it became backcourt, yep. And what happened, there's a corridor right there and he went down a corridor and he made Marino go chase down the ball. <laughs> Cody. Yeah, Cody Keith's right, basically right in the corner of the common avenue gym, and he'll bring the ball into play. Nallback came out to meet the pass, and there they go down inside. Yep, it's going to be a foul. Sexton in established position. He got pushed from behind. Yeah, it's going to be on Dillman, so Dillman will pick up the foul. There's no shots coming up. It's just a possession foul on the baseline. And Keith. Sanborn, he can hit from here. He'll... Take a few times going to Sexton. And, oh, he had the ball stripped away from him. And Cody Keith having a big first quarter here. Looking very confident out there. Well, one thing, just speculations, there's players missing now because the semester ended and papers and grades were handed in. So they kind of, as in every school, they kind of weed out some players. 
And Keith's going to get more playing time. And you know he's not coming off the bench and being replaced in one or two minutes. And he's playing with a lot more confident, like he knows he's going to be in there playing. And yeah, now, look at that MSJ 2-3 zone. And Marino bumps Nallback, takes an off-balance three-point shot. And I'm not sure. Yeah, I was touched by Nallback out of bounds. So will come back to... Burn Burton, and then he got break there because that really wasn't a very good shot selection by Reno. Not the fact he took the three pointer, but it was in the, the lack of technique in which he took it. Well, they'll lob it in, and Sexton with a nice grab, and here they go with a two on two the other way, and Keith going to take it up and got fouled. Yeah. Tell you what. Well, he got his money's worth on that one. It's got hammered against the. Yeah. See, it wasn't the arm we're talking about, it was the push. And that was Dillman with the foul, and that's going to be a second personal. And it's two team fouls apiece now. And Cody Keith at the free throw line. And I like the way he was aggressive and confident, taking him right to the hole. So we'll have Sexton and Nallback down on the blocks for MSJ. And first shot by Cody Keith. He's going to get two here. Going to be a little bit off. And we have a sub coming in. Yeah, number 31 coming in, Bill Dilbert. So Billy Dilbert, number 31, will be in the ball game for Burn Burton. He'll replace Dillman with those two falls. And, oh, look at Sexton keep it alive. Comes to Keith up off the glass and get it, Cody Keith. He didn't get the two points from the free throw line, but he got him on the rebounds and was kept alive by Sexton. He made that all possible. Eight to three, MSJ's JV squad. Now they've, see, they, they made basket. Now they've gone to a, a trap defense, and yeah, they're going to white basketball. Well, you saw what I saw. <laughs> That's called home cooking right there. <laughs> and Keith will give it to Altabell, and Big Louie will snap the ball over and goes from Sanborn to Nallback. No. I like the fact that Nallback's taking some shots tonight, too. He didn't shoot the ball enough. Now, and Altabell came in the front court, made sure he'd cleared the line, got the pass down in the corner, chased down by Sexton. He'll come back to Nallback. That's going to be stealing Louis Altabell with the grab as he took a hold of Nick Perney. And, yeah, tackled him for a loss, but it's going to be a, uh, yeah, the basketball's going to go to. That's two on Altabell now, so see how long going to go with the. Now they're going to bring Joe Chase in. He'll replace Altabell for MSJ. And Marino will take a breather, and number 12 will come in, Dylan Akjar. So Akjar in the game for Burn Burton, number 12, and he's got the touch, and he'll go back now to his teammate Conlon. And Conlon, boy, killed the dribble up top, got bailed out there by having him come back to meet the pass. Sexton with the steal, maybe, nope, lost it out of bounds. Got in there and knocked the ball away, but it'll become Burn Burton basketball. This is the JV game, and Burn Burton's in the green. I'm in the white. You're Looking at the Common Avenue Gym, you're watching Fake TV Channel 15. I'm Jerry Munger bringing in this contest. And that's Akjar, just got in all kinds of trouble. And look at Keith wrestle that away. And look at the refs, let him get that. Oh, what a pass up front. And that's going to be Nallback. Yeah, got it off his hands out of bounds. We're going to burn Burton timeout with 3.48 to go in the first quarter. And it's 8 to 3 MSJ's JV squad with the lead. And you can see Keith got picked up by his old man Chase, and that opened up the court for Akjar, and he'll get a hold of that ball. It was a hot potato there, and he'll throw it all the way across the elbow, and Burn Burton trying to get into their half-court offense here against the MSJ squad. has gone man-to-man -man now. And that's going to be out of bounds, and on the turn, he lost it, and it'll become Mountie basketball. It'll be Chase and Sanborn. I'm sorry, that's Cody. Cody Keith back there with Joe Chase. There's Sanborn. I knew he'd become involved pretty soon in the touches, and... And see Chase wants somebody to move around the ball. And Chase got in there and traveled, yeah. Not there. Yeah, they get it recognized from the No, no, don't try it. If it's not there, don't worry about it. It's yeah, the... no, that was kind of a forced issue and he got called for the travel and You can see they showed some pressure to backcourt, but they pulled back out of it and Conlon now. Well, okay, boy, he's getting in trouble with that dribble, killing the dribble, but he Got it down inside. No. Ball will be bounced around. Touched by everybody on the floor. Just about. Ball come back down to Conlon. Chase will come out and pressure. And there's the turn, the paint, and the block from behind by, I believe it was Sanborn. He waited. He got beat defensively, it looked like, but then he recovered and got the block from behind. It's going to be Mountie basketball. They're up to, eight to three with 2.59 to go in the first quarter. Just two uh, people with a couple fouls apiece on the bench. One for MSJ's Louis Altabell. And Dillman on the Burn Burton bench with two fouls. Oh, look at that. Moving without the ball. The ball was tipped, but it still went in. So Chase 
with the shot, it'll go in, and Akjar wants the teammates to kind of make a little clear there, because two people are on the baseline trying to get the pass, and then yeah, they'll throw it back to the middle of the floor, and that's a good way to get it to Gilbert and break the press, and um, they'll be able to set up, no shot clock for about in the state of Vermont. Gilbert got the drive, kicked it out, and they'll penetrate, up, foul, and count it, I do believe, ye yes, I think Keith just said it, well, yeah, Keith base at the basket's good. Yeah, now Chase will be picking up the foul, and that'll be his first personal. And that cuts the lead down to 10 to 5, and a chance to make a 10 6 here, and a made free throw. Yeah, Max Walker will be checking in for MSJ, next opportunity. Which will come now. And so it is a three point play. Max Walker is going to replace Ben Sexton. So Sexton will take a quick breather and then he'll put Cody Keith on the baseline. He'll pick up the basketball and he'll be chasing Keith in the backcourt. And again, Burn Burton hasn't quite. Well, no, they've stuck pretty much with their base defense right here. And on the curl, again, a little out of control and got down in no man's land and threw the ball back out. And it'll be Burn Burton up. And you know, a lot of it's decision making. You have to give a set play. And Sanborn double dribbled, traveled, and didn't call for anything. And he knew he did it because he waited for the whistle. That's home cooking. Oh, and they got it to Max Walker, and he wasn't expecting the pass. We'll go out of bounds. And Max kind of pulled his arm a little bit, and looks like he's going to be okay. Yeah, something, but. And yeah, there's the move, and Akchar, boy, I'll tell you, this is a pretty rough officiated game right now, let me tell you. <laughs> Travels and double dribbles and contacts, and they must have, uh, what's tonight for TV they got to get home to watch here? Desperate Housewives or something, holy man. And that's going to be Akchar, and with a tip, gets it forward, they give across. Conlon will have his shot hacked at, and that's going to be Sexton that got credit for the block. <laughs> Justin. You see Burn Burnt with the ball and again being very patient and very deliberate on offense. And they're going to work the ball back outside and again down to a minute 14. It goes 10 to 8, so they've really got on a nice little run Burn Burnt has to close the score to make it close. And Sexton sets enough. He batted the ball out of bounds. And they'll restart, and now Marino will come back in the basketball game for Burn Burton. He'll replace J.J. Conlon. I got a wire coach, Carol, before he gave to go. Let me put, put a mic on him. He's more action than what's on the court. Yeah, and there's Louie with the tip away. Will he dunk it? No, he went for the layup, and he'll get it 12 to 8 now. MSJ up by four, and Marino has it stolen away by Chase. He'll throw it back to Sexton. He'll lop his fingertips. He'll be picked up on the far side by Burn Burton. He'll get it to Akjar, and boy, Altabell let the defender, or nice job letting the Altabell the defender fly by him. And there's a shot up and in by Dylan Akjar. And it cuts it to two with 32 seconds to go. 12 10 to Mount. He's first quarter score. And Altabell going to line it up, and nope. Saxton kept it alive, will come on the baseline. Burn Brent with plenty of time, 21 seconds to go. And here's Akjar, gives it across, and yeah, they grabbed it. They were able to handle it, and then he traveled. The forgotten call, but tonight will be made. It'll be Gilbert with the travel. Yeah, so we'll see Chase now. Plenty of time, 13 seconds to go. And He'll give it back to Chase. He'll pump it, go up a little bit too far underneath the backboard, tipped around. It's Max Walker. He'll turn, fire, and Sexton fades, fires. No good. Walker had it. He'll go to the corner. It's going to be the game. Clock going off here with a 12 10 score at the end of one quarter play. MSJ's JV squad with the lead over Burn Burton. Okay, so we'll get set here in the second corner. Again, Altabell playing with two falls for MSJ. And Dillman with two falls for Burn Burton. It'll be Burn Burton with the basketball first. Joe Chase got up in the air, knocked it. Entry pass down, and they'll just reset here. It'll be Burn Burton basketball again, basically within three feet of where they just had it. And Mache had a 10 3 lead at one point, and Burn Burton's closed it down at just a two point deficit. And the game taken on its own character, like every game does. Every game's its own story within 
usually about an hour and 15 minutes worth of storytelling time. And this one's kind of got a little humor going to it tonight. And a lot of JV games are better than a varsity, not because the quality of plays better. It's just usually it's rough and a lot of off the wall stuff happens. And Sam Bourne, and boy, he got some help out there. And yet they'll get it to the free throw line. Fades, fires, no, short front rim taken down. And that'll be Lee John Bizon in the basketball game. 21 for Emerson, his first action of the night. And he'll get the defensive boards up to Chase. Chase will go behind the back. And yet he'll pull back out and he'll set up the offense. Marino right there defensively on him. And Bizon open on the arc. And Chase came all the way around the baseline, traveled. Yep. That was a very slow developing play. And Actually, he was open and just shuffled the feet. And then I'm going to go to the press defense. So we'll have Marino for a minute into the second quarter. And now they're going to have bees on pressure. I'm sorry, you could hear the slap of the hands up here on travel. Yeah, Akjar with the travel. Yeah, and again, Burn Burn going to go back and pick up at their half court set. And I'm sure it'll be. Looks like the man to man, yeah, Chase come down and Marino will pick him up and Chase with a big crossover there. Almost came up with the trap with the palm. And Altabell will muscle it up, not get it to drop, and Bizon will save it on the baseline, gets it back to Altabell and Louie. Let's go oh, far court pass. The Sanborn is blocked. Right to Max Walker, and he's blocked twice on one sequence. Nick Perney with two blocks, all within Two shots, that's, I think that could be like a Guinness oh, a world head record head thing. Head that was pretty impressive. That's more blocks than I've had in my entire street ball career. He did it in one play. Altabell, up, tips, Walker, block, it's gotta be Perny again. That guy is just blocking everything. He looks like a piece of Orville Redenbacher popcorn out there where he's flying up off the floor. Baseline, Perny gave up the shot, gave it back to the free throw line, got it. All twine. And Gilbert with the basket, and all of a sudden, a little life infused into the basketball game. Chase, nope. Rebound. Max Walker with the offensive putback. Yeah, he turned, passed up the dunk and went for the straight steal, and that's going to be a foul. Okay, so we'll have a push called on Gilbert. And for Burn, Burn, now number 22, Sufale come back in. So Sufale back in the basketball game. He played a little bit earlier in the first half quarter and with two minutes gone here in the second quarter, he'll come back in and Chase will launch a fire and be off the mark and that'll be Sanborn sliding the ball along the baseline, comes to Perny. Perny wants to come back to Connolly. and Connolly now will go to Perny. He's the hot guy, that's who you should be following right now. Go to the hot hand out there and there's the screen. Up, tip, Sanborn, can't save it. Yeah, everybody but me touched that ball on the floor that time. And they're gonna work the ball to the free throw line and we got travel call. Yeah, Walker coming out now. And good minutes by Max Walker out there for MSA. He had that offensive rebound in the basket and played some solid defense. Nall back back in the basketball game over 13. And yeah, and Chase so anxious. That was all wide open for him to go on the lane and to go out of bounds off from his foot. And with 5.30 to go in the half, it's 14 to 12 MSJ. Conlon down to Perny. He'll put it on the floor and not really sure what happened here, but the Mounties will get lucky. Oh my goodness, slapping and hacking and Jesus Christ. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure who was going to get it because there's a variety of different people he could have called different shots on and balls on, but it'll be Nat, uh, Matt Shaw will get it. So Shaw will be called for the foul. And it'll be MS Shane out with the basketball. That's only the fourth team ball. Four team falls apiece on the floor. And that's going to be Shaw's first personal. And Sanborn can be impatient. Lee John B's on the chase. And he wants to go down to Nullback. And there's Nullback with the ball. The pump fake. And nope. B's on kept it alive. But it's going to be taken out by Conlon. And Conlon, he should bring it up himself. And he will. He'll cross the timeline now. And he'll come to the right side. There's the catch. The baseline. And Altabell got some help defensively. Altabell will get the rebound now. I believe it was Lee John Bizon that came over to help out defensively. And Chase with the spin and another block shot. 
I'll tell you, Burn Brent with at least five block shots now as a team in the ballgame. Perny with three of them. And yet Joe Chase coming out a little discomfort. Yeah, and Cody Keith back in the basketball game, number three for MSJ. And that's who's got the basketball. He'll catch, launch, and that was blocked. Another block for Burn Burton. They're trying to work the ball down the sideline. They do. They get into the open court. That's on the floor. And they literally hand the ball off to Gilbert. And now they settle it down. They'll take the three-point shot. No good. And the rebound will be Nalback. And he's played a strong ball game, Nalback has. I know we're only a quarter and a half into this, but he's looking real good and confident out there. Sanborn to Keith. Turns, fires inside the paint. No good. Rebound on the box out down there by Burn. Burns number 22, Zufale. And... Conlon, boy, what a pass. I went right, it had to be perfect. It was pretty tight quarters down there and they're able to work it in and now they'll just set their motion offense up top and then it'll be a pass over to Danny Keith. He'll make the catch. Got the hands, got Lenny Burke next to him in case he, he'd missed it. But Keith will see Seamborn and again, Burn Burns been very passive as far as coming up the floor to extend the defense, put pressure on and we go to Altabell, and man, he's right in the sweet spot and can't get the finish. Oh, did he back off the shot softly there? Chase back at the scores table, so he must be all right, and he'll be coming back along with Marino for Burn Burton. 14 12, still the score, still MSA by two, and we're still in the second quarter here with a 335 to go on the clock. Again, Burn Burton right now, everybody above the free throw, and now they put somebody down below, and I tell you. That's going to be out of bounds. Yeah, so Cody Keith will wait. They're making some switches on the floor right now. And so here comes Keith with Chase. Looks like Chase will run the offense for this possession right here. And they've rotated through a couple different point guards, actually three different point guards tonight. And yeah, you can see some traffic being directed out there by Chase. He'll come back to Nallback. They want to reverse the ball, get it to Keith. He'll get it to the free throw line to Nallback. He'll ball fake up to Keith to the bucket and no. There's Altabell almost at the hands and Lee John Bizon jump ball. Yeah, so they're going to give the ball possession here. We'll go to MSJ and they'll have the basketball. One three, one three. Yeah, so you'll see Keith. Look and wait till Chase popped out and Chase wants to go down inside and he came back up top instead and Altabell had the ball taken away from him. They'll push it inside and roll to the hole and get the basket. That's Perny back in the ball game and tell you what, he makes stuff happen out there for Burn Burn. We're tied at 14 all. Altabell to Null back, they give it back and boy, I tell you, you think those guys have played together for a while watching that play. Again, simple play but easy to execute and it works any decade you play it in, and the results in two shots coming up for Louis Altabell. And that foul, ooh, that's the third one. It's going to be on Dillman. That's his third personal. And that now bring Gilbert back in the basketball game over 31 for Burn Burton. Nope. And Act Chair number 12 also coming back in the contest for the Bulldogs. And each team looking out there, yeah, pretty much played everybody, cycled through their benches, and we're all tied up at 14. And Altabell will not, boy, what an unkind home rim. Is that just uh, uncooperative? That one, literally, the old cliche halfway down. Bernie, boy, he had the paint to drive, and all back just got into the picture now. And that's Akjar, and oh my goodness, how they didn't get the ball away, I don't know. That's come back, Reno, he traveled. Yep. Yeah, so they'll take it out of bounds. Mountingsville right in front of their bench. And it'll be Keith and Chase again. And we'll see what they're going to come up with on the play this time. And then Akjar will pick up Chase, number 12. See, Akjar rotate to the ball and took away the baseline. And that's Lee John Bizon at the arc. Keith. Keith on the elbow will put it on the floor and wait for the cycle up top. And yeah, they're going to be patient here. Both teams pretty much mirror each other. As far as their philosophies of managing the game climb. Oh, it's that there for a split second, then finally fell in. Nice shot by Nallback. Minute 53 to go in a half, and 16 to 14, MSJ takes the lead back. So, at the makings of a tight one here. 
What a catch, and now it's all back. Went out from Bijan's hands off Chase's back, and I don't know why it's not back court, but hit Chase in the front court, rolled off his butt into the back court, and he picked it up and didn't call anything. Ball on the floor, and so it'll be Perny with the foul, and yes, just the team six, and it's on the floor, no shots coming. Oh, Nalback was just so alone. He was like a sad song on a radio, but they didn't give him the basketball. Chase up, ball tip, still gets in. 18-14, Mellings lead to four. They had a seven point lead at one time at 10 to three. Yeah, and they orchestrate the press, a little different look this time. That's that fade away off the back rim. The follow up, Gilbert, boy, what mistake he made. He brought the ball down in the paint. He just catches, keeps it up and shoots. He's gonna have it. So Marino on the baseline, calls the play out for Burn Burton and Nullback, he'll defend the pass coming in. And boy, I tell you, they, I think Lee Jung got a piece of it. And well, whoever touched it, they're gonna say it's gonna be MSJ basketball. Which is 70 seconds to go here. Getting in the JV contest in the second quarter of play. And it's an 18-14 basketball game. I'm gonna say with almost mirror images of quarters. They had 10 in the first, they have eight here, and they got a foul or jump ball. Looks like a foul being called. And we'll wait for the call to come in. So it's gonna be Perny picking up the foul, and they'll have Chase go to the line. And that's gonna be the second foul on Perny, and that would be a big loss right there if he were to pick up his third foul with 56.6 seconds. Gotta be a big, uh, nobody coming off the bench going for him right now though. I don't know if they'd sub for him with just a minute to go here in this second quarter. And that's Perny with the rebound. So Burn Burton able to dodge that free throw bullet and Perny with the ball on the floor. He'll take the one dribble, bring it up and now they go down, turn around, no. Rebound, Lee John Bizon, 43 seconds to go. He'll outlet to Altabell and Altabell long pass up front to Chase. He got pushed, yeah, Marino will pick up the foul. And that's gonna be the one-on-one -on -one now. Yeah, and Chase back at the line for MSJ. And, well, even with just 38 seconds to go, the rest of the first half of play, MSJ will be in a bonus situation. It's also the eighth team foul. Mountains are just four on the, their home side here. No, and they came up short, and you see they want the outlet pass, and it's taken away. They've guarded the denial defense there on, on Marino, and they had to bring the ball up themselves. Now they'll go back to Marino. He'll set, fake, let the defender literally sky by him. Want to go down inside, and we're going to have a jump ball. And it'll be on a shape of basketball. Hey, Vern Burton's had a couple possessions here inside the minute mark and haven't been able to even generate a shot. Yeah, I mean, 23 seconds to go. Wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities that Steve would wait for the last shot here. Steve Garrow, the head coach. Little inside outside game. Null back to Altabell, and he got hooked. Yeah, he came up and he's at least got the one on one, but. Two shots, okay, that's what I was waiting to see, so. So Altabell will be at the line and this last 56 seconds has taken about four minutes. Lots of whistles. Got it. And we got 19 to 14. Now fall was on Gilbert, number 31. Billy Gilbert picking up his second personal and Nalback almost tipped it up and in. I'll tell you, Nalback just, best game I've seen him play all year. I only do the home games, so I can't tell you what he did on the road, but six seconds, five seconds, and Akjar go back to Perny. And Marino, we shot. Mounties will have a 19-15 lead at the half over Burn Burnt in JV basketball action. So it'll be the Bulldogs with the basketball first here to get the third quarter underway. I'm going with that 5-0 run to close out the half. And we're tied at 14, and the Mounties up by 5, 19 to 14. Marino and Keith came down the floor. Nalback with the steal. And again, Nalback with a real solid effort in that first half of play. And he starts off good here in the third quarter with the steal. Gets it out to Sam Bourne. He'll fire the pass to Altabell. Down along the 
blocks to Sexton and they'll just get control of it and settle the offense down. Yeah, they'll run, start running that motion. That's going to be a nice deal by Conlon. Came around, got the ball away from Sanborn, crosses over, gets in the center of the paint, up and no. Rebound, Perny, no. Oh, he's a good jumper. He's got three blocks in the ball game right there. He just didn't get the finish after the offensive rebound, but it'll become MSJ basketball. And each team offensively really kind of mirrors each other play-wise and also with the uh, philosophy of and to spread the floor, run the motion, take the time, if, you know, take as much time as you want to set up your offense. But if the break is there, I Shea will take the break, and I can't imagine Burn Burton wouldn't. They go down to Nullback, he posts up nicely, showing the bar, brought it back, there's the block. Perny with his, just another block. Conlon looking around the pack with it, goes off from Reno's foot and out of play. Off from, should be, should be white basketball, yeah, it was off from Reno and out of bounds. They were kind of clumped together there, and that, Made it hard to get the pass off to Marino, and yeah, it's just like a two-on-one -on -one in hockey. You've got to kind of make some space here between you two of you. Sanborn slid to the hole. That's going to be put up and almost went in. It was tipped from behind. Here comes Nallback, and he came walking on through. And tell you what, <laughs> I've taken hikes that I didn't walk that <laughs> far. On. <laughs> so now MSU will press the ball, and it's going to be Marino. To Gilbert, and that's going to be Altabell on him, and they'll bring it up to Marino, and he'll go to the floor, and it's going to be a travel, yeah. So they kind of get off to a choppy start here in this third quarter, and the players too. And they're going to put Marino on the ball, and that's going to be Keith just giving it off to Sanborn, who kicked to the back court. And, and Sanborn's done a nice job this season of really Polishing up his game and his ball handling skills. Sexton up and in. An offensive rebound by Sexton will come a basket. 21-14. Then you see him tack the ball now and they gotta break the timeline and they do just beat the 10 count. They'll get up to Conlon and boy you can see Keith get his hands there. He popped the ball free, got it to his teammate Sanborn. Sanborn isolated in the backcourt against Conlon. A few crossovers, got it to Altabell. He'll scoop it off the floor as a low pass and he handled it nicely. Now back to the basket, and Justin will get it. MSJ, can, that's a carryover from the first half. It's on a 9-0 run right now, 23-14. MSJ's JV squad with the pressure, creating turnovers and getting the buckets off them. Burton timeout, and Marino will bring the ball into play. And now you got Joe Keith in there, Keith number 15. And I think it's the first time I've seen him tonight. For Burton Burton, that is. He's in the basketball game now. Keith is trying to stay to the spot. Yeah, beat him to the spot. And Gilbert will be hooked by Nallback. Go to his knees. No whistle called. And Keith with the basketball wants to go down inside to Perny. Up and blocked. And a foul. Sexton got in the air and got him with the lower half of his body. And there'll be two shots coming up. Two shots. Okay. So Perny at the line. And again, he's done a good job all night for Burn Burn. Like, I believe he's got five blocks now as he's just been just wiping everything out, going up by MSJ, who's ever he's defending, and he's at the line out to shoot two, and trying to stop that 9-0 run carrying over from the first half into the second half, and he'll miss that first free throw, and he'll get a, another opportunity here with just, well, it's two fouls now on Sexton also. So Sexton will pick up two personal fouls, and that'll drop in. And that's gonna make it an eight-point ball game. So as much as MSJ has been able to get a run going, they're only, Still in a manageable situation down just eight, and that's going to squirt out to Sanborn. He's at the free throw line, and he got held. Yep. Ekjar will get called for the hold. And what happened there, he just got too close defensively. When the dribble's live like that, you've got to give him some space, or you're going to, right there, it's going to happen. You're going to buy in. Your instincts reach out and get the hold. Sanborn bumping and grinding. I'm sorry, it's Keith. He got bumping and grinding inside. No good. Rebound. Keith up and no good. It's going to come all the way over to Sanborn. It's going to be another offensive rebound for the Mounties. Got to let Altabell hold it between circles and they holler out the motion and stolen away by Akjar and he traveled. Yeah, he did a nice job of getting the steal and then he just couldn't get the ball down the floor quick enough and we called for the travel and we'll take a side out. MSJ will on the far side of the bleacher side. There's not a lot of people at a JV game, and there's just tons of open bleachers. And it's going to be something. Let's see here. 
think he called it on Perny. If he does, that's three on Perny, and they're going to bring Dillman back in the ball game. He's going to replace Gilbert, and that's for Burn Burton. But there's one. Well, I, well, she looks younger than me, but there's one adult lady out there. Everybody looks younger than me. But she's uh, sitting right in the middle of the MSJ crowd cheering for Burn Burton. Darn to see saw. Travel on all back. Again. Yeah, and you can see Keith on the basketball. And Keith now with it. It's Keith for MSA. This is Keith for Burn Burton. And you hear footsteps coming behind him. And you get the ball back to Marino. They want Marino to run the point and set the offense anyways for Burn Burton. Dillman to Akjar. He turned to last second and got wrestled to the floor. And yeah, they're going to let the ball go over to MSJ. Now Perny will sit down. He's got those three personal falls at the 438 to play mark in the third quarter. And we've seen Sanborn, Chase, and Keith at the point for MSJ. Oh, look at Louis. Great space turn, fade, fire, no good. Rebound will be chased down by Altabell. He'll come back to Sanborn, who short opt it. And Altabell wants to roll inside, hits several sets of feet, no whistle on the play. It'll be Akjar with the basketball. He'll bring the pass back by tight quarters, but he got the ball back to Marino. And, yep, right idea. Just pass was too much on the line. He had to put a little more air underneath it. He's trying to go down on the baseline. And if he would have put air under it, they would be able to get the ball down in the blocks. And who knows what would have happened then. But right now, they're trying to get into Sexton. There's just no space. They had a defender in the front and a defender in the back. And Altabell's going to block it. Follow up. Got it. That was Dillman with the follow-up for Burn Burton, and he'll make it 23-17. So Burn Burton with the lead down to six, and there's a one and out, and a foul called on Keith. Yeah, so there'll be Burn Burton. No shot, so just have the ball on the baseline out of bounds. And again, Marino and Keith will match up, and that's been the matchup most of the night. Keith is open, and they'll get him the basketball. Hey, if they get it to him earlier, he's got a lot better angle to bring the ball down the floor. That's tip, but it'll come back to Marino and almost traveled there. And that's going to be Keith up and the foul. So Dillman will pick up his fourth foul, I believe. That's his fifth, and he's gone. So, yeah. You got a foul and then a technical foul. And they're going to bring number 22 back in the basketball game, Sufale. So Sufale will come in the basketball game. He'll replace Dillman, who's gone for the night, because the technicals count as your personals now. And just, yeah, they're going to choose Sanborn to take the free throws. Okay, so he'll step up and. So the original foul had no shots coming. So he'll just get the uh, technical fouls. Yeah, and that's going to be a little bit, as you can see, off to, to the right, and you'll get another chance here. And Shaw at the scores table. He'll be checking in for Burn Burton. And Sanborn will miss them both, and Shaw will come in the ball game, and he's going to replace Akjar. So it'll be MSA with the basketball after the technical foul and the other foul, so. In one play, he picked up two fouls, and he was gone. And there's a language foul. He said something they didn't like. Oh, nice move, and the finish, and the basket. And tell you what, Cody Keith just playing like I haven't seen him play all season. Good, aggressive moves, confident, staying out there, looking at the bench, talking with the coach about what they want to do next. And that was a strong move right there he just made. And he got the bat, the free throw, so three-point play for Cody Keith on that. Now he'll get on the ball defensively, and yeah, now they're going to yeah, get to the ball, trying to stop the progress up the court. They'll get it on the wing, and it's going to be all the way in. No. And Sexton will get the rebound. He'll get fouled, and I believe it's going to be on Zufale. Yeah, and it is on Zufale, 22 for Burn Burton. Chase will come into basketball game number five for MSJ. He's going to give Sanborn a breather. And you see Cody Keith just waiting with 3.20 to go for the ball to be put in play. 26-19, 26-17, 9-point lead. And they're going to let Max in. Yeah, Max Walker at the scores table. No, okay. 
So Max Walker in 24 will be checking in shortly to set the uh, scores table for MSJ. Chase to Altabell and then got sandwiched between his own man and Shaw out there and Chase come back and Chase looks like he'll run the point now. And like I said, they've had three different guys run the point on the offense tonight and Keith, one of them, he had to touch. He'll go to Sexton. And oh, nice job by Gilbert down there defensively. Not only knocked the ball away, but knocked it to his teammate. And again, they're, they're right within it. They're only nine points down. And this is going to be Sean and Marino and MSJ playing that man to man defense. Wasn't used to seeing it up. And oh, he reversed it. And Shaw got it. Nifty move. We see this is Chase with 235 to go in the third quarter. And what little crowd there is here for Burn Burton getting right into it. And all back to Altabell. Got strip going through. Jump ball. And I think it's going to be green basketball. No, it's going to be down here. Okay, so it'll be MSJ basketball. And it'll be taken out of bounds by Keith. And not only was 24 Max Walker coming in, but for Burn Burton coming in is Conlon, number 21. And Chase with the catch. Stands on the arc. Gets the sexton. Turns. Fires. A little strong off the glass. And Conlon waiting for Chase. There he is in midcourt. He'll pick him up and pressure him and gets the ball to the top of the arc. And Gilbert turned, didn't have the basketball. It's going to be picked by his teammate and blocked by Altabell. And it comes down to Keith. So great action sequence here down inside. And Keith, Chase. Keith went back, got the catch, got the bump, made the baseline, and gets it to Sexton. No. That's Max Walker had it, lost it. It'll be Conlon, will be followed by Keith in the backcourt. And that's going to be the third team fall. And I believe that might even be, that's only two on Keith. And they want to go up to midcourt to Sean. Sean will be picked up by Altabell. By Sean able just to push the ball to the foul lane. That was Walker following him as MSJ again bodying right up defensively. And Keith now will stand on the arc with a minute 36 to go against Keith. To fall. They didn't force the ball along the baseline. They brought Conlon over and they didn't buy it. And no, before the shot, got a hold call. And 25 white will be Sexton. He's got three falls now. So a bunch of players on both sides trying to get up there. They, one, two, three, four players with three falls. One player's gone with five already with the aid of a technical. And Perny will be coming in. Nice catch and finish. Oh, you should never let that happen down inside like that. 26-21, Burn Burton back to within five, so they're having a strong finish to the third quarter now. There's the catch by Walker, and yeah, he'll kick the ball back up top to Altabell, and Altabell behind the back, showing you all his moves, will come to Keith. And again, it's been a game of little runs back and forth, and he should have a hold as he rode Chase into the paint. Yeah, and that's the one-on-one -on -one now. So it's seventh team foul, and that'll send Chase to the line, and He's going to shoot the one and one, and Perny coming back in for Sufale for Burn Burton. Yeah, remember MSJ is able to open up a nine point lead. Now Burn Burton with it down to five, and Sanborn coming in for Keith. Now send Chase up to the line, and that's just the one and one, so this is the front end of the shot. And Joe will be up and no. That's going to be Perny had it. He'll tip it back into play to Shaw and picked up by Chase and Max Walker. No. Boy, Sexton just took it away and got it. Just re yeah, relentless on the boards, MSJ, right there. And Sexton will get the basket. And Perny between circles. And he's the kind of guy, he's mashed up now. You got to look for the matchups. He's the quicker player right now out there on the floor. They got to give him the ball and Gilbert up and no. Rebound one and out. Sexton will get the pass around Perny. He'll get it to Altabell. 30 seconds on the clock. Up ahead to Walker and got it! Walker with four points in the basketball game now. Sanborn gambled. Keith made the grab. Keith into the front court. Didn't hear Sanborn coming back from behind him. Sanborn will make the steal and get fouled and go to the line as Gilbert will pick up the foul. Yeah, so it is official. It is Gilbert and it's still the one and one. And I remember Sanborn just a few moments ago took the technical fouls, missed them both. So he's got his practice shots, and now he's back at the line and see how he's going to do here. With 
Yeah, just 20 seconds left in the third quarter. That's the fourth foul on Gilbert. Got it. And Zavale will come back in the basketball game. He's going to place Gilbert with those four fouls. And so Burn Burn already has lost one player to five fouls. Nope. And Zavale takes it away from Walker and fakes the pass hard. Comes to Keefe on this far side. And Keefe being guarded by Sanborn. 12 seconds, 11, 10. That, and now they're going to put the body on Zavale. And they bring it off to Conlon. Six seconds. Oh, the paint opened up and tip. Still goes in. Altabelle got a piece of it. And, well, just an eight point lead. Now he's up by eight. And JB Ball over Burn Burton going into the fourth quarter. You see Keefe, number 15, will get the start here in the fourth quarter for Burn Burton. And he'll throw the ball away. And Altabelle, an easy pick. And. I mean, Shay, the way the game has gone, the trends have been that Mounties had the strong first portion of each quarter, and Burn Burton has a stronger second portion of the quarters. So Chase will lob the ball in the middle, and Zavale with the steal, and he'll get up ahead to Conlon. Conlon curls out, takes the jumper instead, switched it. Oh, boy, you don't see enough of those mid range jump shots anymore, and he'll get it. Six point ball game, 31 25. Always a possibility of overtime looming here. And it's because neither team's blowing the other one out when they've taken the leads. Like I said, it's got as high as nine for MSJ. Walker turns, fires, and it's going to be on the floor. It's going to be Bizon in there. will go up and got it. Bizon with a nifty shot. I don't think he could have thrown it any higher without hitting the ceiling. That was pretty cool. See, I, I think Burn Burnt needs Perny number 20 to really... Get involved offensively. Yeah, I think he's got the athleticism to do it. So I'll be chased with the fall and two shots coming up for Conlon. And I'll stop the clock with 6.59 to go and burn Burton down by eight. And that's the fifth team fall. J.J. Conlon will be a little bit strong, hit the back of the rim and pop back out. He's got another chance here. He'll try to salvage one or two. Run it, guys. Run it. Come on. Yeah, now the Mounties with Bison and Walker down on the blocks. Altabell and Sanborn up top on the box. And Chase is going to be the point. And that'll be short and I'll be tipped around. I'll go off from Bison. He'll be able to get to it easily before it goes out of bounds. And Actually, he's going to go to Sanborn. Sanborn's going to run the point. Sanborn will try to pass into a double team. Take it out there by Savali. Bizon will stay back there and bother the basketball. Marino, number 32. Now he wants the basketball back on that side. And they go down instead and get the catch to Perny. Perny's the kind of guy, I'd post him up, put him down low, and let them use that leaping ability to reel in the passes on the baseline. He's got the kind of body where he could play the ba baseline very well. Get, 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 get. Get. Boy, a lot of defensive pressure now. MSHA doing a good job of extending then. Yeah, she's going to be green basketball. So Keefe will take it out in the 15. And they're just going to run the stack play. You see that right there. And somebody will just kick out. And, and it's right there. It comes as a volley. So 6.13 clock running, 33.25 MSJ. This yeah, is the yeah. JV game on Pike TV Channel 15 Sports. Wayne Sanborn did a good job of recovering because he turned the wrong way defensively, gave up the baseline, but was able to beat him to the spot down low. Perny wanted to go baseline, but just tried to make the move before he had to catch, and could be why they don't put him on the baseline that often. Altabelle will swing it down inside, turns Walker block, Perny with yet another one, comes to Altabelle on rejection, and yeah, Chase, Good job that time of pulling the shot back out. Wasn't there, he didn't force it. He'll get it to the three-point line, catch fire, and get it off the glass and in. Well, you gotta tell you, I don't remember any other threes tonight, but he'll get that one, 36-25 MSJ. And it's an MSJ timeout. That timeout taken by Burn Burton, and we'll see what they came up with there after that. MSJ with a new man in the basketball game, and I'll have to catch up to this. Marino, that's a three ball. Got it. 
That will make it interesting as he makes that shot and makes it a 36-28 game. Lead down to eight now. Sanborn wants to go to Bizon. There wasn't the lane there. And they're looking to give it off to number 23 for MSJ. And oh, I gotta work on that name. Tayun Um. <laughs> I know I probably said it wrong, but I'll work on it. Yeah, so they're gonna run set up the offense. They're gonna recycle it. They want to go up or down, actually, to Bizon. He'll go up and fake. Ball was hit, and they're gonna call foul. If it's Perny, it's his fourth. Two shots. Okay, so that is his fourth, the team's ninth. And actually with 4.59 to go, might be worth leaving it in. And Lee John Bizon will not get that first one to cooperate with him, and we'll stay at an eight-point spread right now. I said the lead at one point was nine for MSJ, and Fern Burton has been as close as, well, they last time they were tied, it was at 14. And that's going to be picked up by the Mounties. Yeah, they need some help. They're going to throw up top. Marino will make the steal. Marino gets Sanborn there. And yeah, he'll get cut off. And that's another three ball. Nope. Boy. Rebound. Conlon, baseline, wants to kick it back out. Good decision to restart the offense. That's a three ball again. And that's good. Boy, I thought, oh, two. I'm sorry. They're saying two point shot. 36 30, though. And here comes Burn Burton. Chase up. Block. That is Sufale with the block. And then Burn Burns going to be in double digits with blocks now in this basketball game. Absolutely, he does. Bizon, Perny, playing with those five fouls. Got lucky there. Then he called for the block. Altabelle will come out to meet the pass. He's got Shaw on him. And Mache looking to make the move. They'll turn fire and be a little short and it'll be out of bounds. Tayun E O M is how it is spelt. And I gotta be honest with you, I do not know how to pronounce that. Burn Burton all able to get it tight here toward the end. It's still just about four minutes to go. Shaw is gonna go to the line. I believe he's gonna go to the line. Two shots. Okay, so that'll be Chase's third fall for MSJ. And they'll have Gilbert at the scores table. He'll have to wait till the second shot to come in. And for MSJ, Cody Keith and Justin Allback coming in. Yeah, and so all the changes will take place now in the second shot. And as Sean missed that first one. And I tell you, I like the rotation off the bench by both teams tonight as they've cycled everybody. It's JV ball. You've got to let them play, got to let them learn. And now, kind of rushed his shots. Keith with the rebound, go up to Chase. Chase with Conlon back defensively. Chase to the baseline, and Chase wants to come back. Nallback, he's going to let it go. He's got it going tonight. Nallback's been an offensive force tonight. And I mean, he's done it inside, he's done it outside. He's done a nice job. Yeah, and you've seen the penetration and then the foul. Yeah, why don't you give up the dribble? Penetration. Once they get to the free throw line and the, and the offensive player shoulder to shoulder with you, you're beat. And I believe yeah, it's going to be Perny going to the line. I don't understand why they haven't incorporated him a little bit more in the lower post offensive areas. That time he did, yeah, and it's 38 30. Now he's up by eight. That'll drop in. Seven point ball game. And Again, it's guy like this most tonight. I'll get lead will get up to around eight or nine. They'll cut it down to four or five and then fluctuate back and forth in that zone. And that one will be off the mark. Tip, 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 and picked up by Bizon. So Bizon to Keith. And Keith now with the bounce pass to Chase. Nallback. Oh, he's got his moves going. He just didn't get the shot that time. Nallback knocked down his own teammate and got the shot away. Boy, that's being hungry. He went down and took the ball away from Bizon. And then pushed him to the floor and took the shot. But I don't know what Justin had today to eat. He obviously wasn't a frozen dinner like me, but whatever it is, he's energized tonight. And Marino able to reach out and knock that down. 
kept it from going out of bounds of basketball, that is. And Gilbert playing with four falls, 31 back out there, and he stops on the arc with the dribble and Marino. And they're going to be patient. They're only down nine. And they just need points off possessions. Again, they, they just need, you know, one, two, or three point thing here on possessions. Of course, if they're going to milk the clock down that way, they're going to be shooting threes on necessity. But there you go. And Gilbert from the baseline, and just like that, it's a seven point ball game. I got to tell you, I'm a little surprised. Well, we'll see what happens with two minutes, that they haven't extended the defense out a little bit more. Chase up, fouled, and going to the line. Got him on the arm. They're looking for a number. Also, oh, he's got his fifth foul, and he's gone. So Perny will pick up his fifth, and... Yeah, so Perny, who, very impressive out there athletically. Like I said, he's got at least seven, possibly eight blocks in the ball game. I mean, good looking blocks. And yeah, and he'll go down with the five fouls. They have a couple players for Burn Burton that have both fouled out of the contest. And Joe Chase. will put it up and no. A little strong with that one, and he'll try to make an adjustment here on his second shot. Good concentration, and... Nope. Bizon boxed out by Zavale, and he'll get it to Keith, and Keith now will probably see a lot more playing time. Because they're getting thin on the bench with the two players fouled out for Burn Burton. And they're, they're right in there, down by seven, and Suvale will work against Bizon and move his feet nicely. Goes to Marino, and Marino on the curl gets to the free throw line. Pump fakes, brought the shot down, goes to Connell, and he'll get inside, got hooked around, and double dribbled and got fouled. They had a variety of stuff there. They had a travel, a double dribble, and a foul. Louis will pick it up, so Altavel will pick up the foul. And just three on Louis. Remember, he had the two early fouls and kind of leveled off his play here and stayed nice and controlled defensively, then picked his third foul up with less than two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. That's the eighth team foul on MSJ. And Conlon will be up, and yep. And he followed it all the way in, so it's going to be a six-point lead at 40-34. Again, it's burned pretty much always been within 10 points of all the game. And J.J. Conlon on a second shot will get it. And again, I wanted to see what they're going to do with two minutes. They didn't go to the press after the made basket. And again, with no shot clock in the state of Vermont. And Ooh, Joe got a little blocking there. And Cody Keith will cross over and his pass tip. Keith with the seal off from Keith. And they give it to Marino. Up, block, hard off the backboard. And no. Boy, came right back to Burn Burton. Here's Keith, and he's going to recycle. He'll ball fake, swing the pass over to Marino. Marino. To Zuvale, and he thought about the three. Gives it to Conlon, and no front rim at rebound. He'll come down to Bison, and he'll go down to Cody Keith. And Keith now has some court to work with as he gets it back to the middle of the floor. And now, with a minute 19 to go, start thinking about having a, how much time you're going to let him run off if they don't take a shot in here before you commit the foul, because you're down by multiple possessions. And they got him on the floor. It's going to be Marino picking up the foul. And it's going to be the ninth team foul. I'm sorry. They're over the 10 team foul limit. My, my mistake. So they're going to have a 30 second timeout taken by MSA, up by five with 70 seconds to go. And they're going to be at the line. Yeah, so it'll be Keith at the line for MSJ. And this is the double bonus uh, over the 10 team limit. And that foul was called on. Marino, number 32, just his second foul, and that's good. Hey, Cody Keith, and like I said, I don't do the road games. I'm only going by what I see at home. This is by far his best effort of the season here at home. Got them both. That's big, seven-point spread now. Now, the last thing you want to do for MSJ is foul. Play good defense, but don't send him to the line. Keith will be up, and somebody... Louie got a piece of it. Altabel will get a piece of it. We're going to have just a sub timeout, I think, aren't we? No, they're going to go all the way. So it's going to be an MSA timeout with one minute even to go up by seven. Set. They uh, pretty much went over everything to cover what's going to happen in the last minute. It's a good timeout taken by Coach Garrow. 
finally see pressure on the ball from Burn Burn. I just wonder, you know, it's just conjecture and speculation. I'm just filling up airspace, but I, th I think I would have gone to the press with three, three and a half minutes to go just to kind of make something happen. And all well, what have me pivoted and lost his place on the floor and stepped out of bounds. So he'll be side out and Burn Burn will have the basketball. This is JJ Conlon with number 21 and Marino. In 48 seconds to go, and they got to put a little more urgency into their offense here and kind of pick up the tempo, kind of like a hurry-up offense in football. And Gilbert will be tied up. Gilbert looking for a foul. He actually traveled first, so he should be happy with the jump. So the MSJ's <laughs> basketball. Just 38 seconds to go in the JV game, the Mounties. Their home court, and they throw it out of bounds. So they're in the white uniforms. Will be again. Burn Burton just, I really believe, down seven, 36 seconds to go. I don't know everybody's instincts to start launching threes, but they just need points. If they're going to give you an easier shot and concede it, then take it because he's going up and oh, killer, killer miss right there. And Altabell will pivot, and he could have put it on the floor, but he pivoted, got the chase, chase up at the null back. And he's going up for the dunk, and nope, he's going for the layup instead, and he got it. That should be the ball game, 44-35, nine points now. And they're going to let Marino go all the way down and in, and whoa, hard off the glass to all back. So a good effort by the Mountain JV squad tonight. They're going to get the win over Burn Burton, and again, Burn Burton was basically right on the edge of being in the game the whole night. They were in the whole game all the whole night, but they are right on the edge of... They're going to call a foul. Again, two shots, okay. Yeah, so Chase will go to the line and it will be the second foul on Conlon. That's irrelevant now, but I just I tell you that, so. You'll get it. 10 point lead, 45-35, and Shaw coming in with one second. I got, looking at the clock, I think I'm reading right, one second. Me personally as a player, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to come in one second. That'll go in, and so they'll make the touch, that'll be the game, and there it is, and shot won't count. MSJ's JV squad will win it, 46-35 over Burn Burton.